In this video, we're going to check out the most useful Google search terms and operators in the context of performing a cybersecurity assessment. You can adjust the scope of a search query to any level of a targeted domain. And let's take offsec.com as an example. You can do, you can use the site operator to limit the scope of your search only to the offsec.com domain, for example. Okay, we have a few results. We can open this kind of by using a, a wildcard here, an asterisk, which, uh, which will return results for offsec as the domain name, but also any uh, top level domain that this domain is associated with. And uh, knowing that, you know, we have this, let's say, example target being offsec, we can understand from the logo actually that hey, uh, this does not really, doesn't look like it belongs to Offsec. Offsec.tools also is not in offensive security's scope of domains. This is actually a website that you can uh, go and search for tools, offensive security tools created by this guy. Really cool. Uh, I recommend that you check it out. But maybe we want to exclude stuff like that from our search. I mean, keep it open in the context of the top level domain. But maybe we can use uh the minus site which excludes whatever we want to get rid of and let's for example say hey you know what i want everything from offsec dot whatever top level domain except from offsec to tools okay we took that away also we have some other outsiders you can of course repeat this for example i don't want um blog i don't want academy okay and you see the results are falling and we can also do this with third level domains for example um, searching for interesting things uh, with a targeted domain i know and you know that uh, dub 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 is actually what a company usually wants to be found on the internet so we can exclude actually this particular third level domain because okay this is something that is probably something simple and there's usually not really something juicy uh, at least in the context of Eventest, we're looking also for some third level domains that are, you know, maybe something juicy in there. Maybe you can enumerate further or find some sensitive information. So we took that off. Actually, I'm going to delete all of these things. Let's just go to offsec.com. You, you understand the point of the previous example. So let's see what we got. We have now that we excluded this uh, www.offsec, we have status. And let's see what that is. This is, for example, something interesting. It seems like a, a page that an admin would uh, check to see if systems are online because we can see OK or out. So I guess someone can just uh, use this site to maybe offensive security engineers use this to, to check if everything is working or something. So that's something interesting. Maybe if you were doing an authorized penetration testing against offsec, you could further enumerate this. Maybe there's something more. Another interesting thing we can do is search for specific file types and let's stick with the offsec.com domain and I'm gonna use the file type operator and let's search for PDF just to get the flavor of this particular search term. You can see we get uh, as results PDFs associated with offsec.com. You can use the file type search term to discover potentially confidential files that are exposed or PHP, you know, aspects, JSP files, files that are more like server-side scripting, maybe they include the parameters in the URLs, so that's definitely interesting from a pen testing point of view. And also you can use it to actually search for bizarre files, sometimes uh, it's unimaginable what you can really find in uh, with Google. And I'm, I'm just, just to show an example, let's uh, get a little bit away from this offsec example because uh, it doesn't have it doesn't return some so much content so it's not a great example for some of the weird queries I'm gonna do right now so let's do file type for example env which is uh, this file type exists it's associated I think with Adobe uh, dictionary or something but it's also uh, it's, it's uh, when it comes to systems you know it, it reminds a lot of environments and stuff like that so uh, I recently did some interesting query and it's a good moment to introduce also logical operators. We can use AND and OR with uh, Google searching. So let's do, uh, we will search for env file type, but we will also add some keywords like password or uh, password or db password, which it's quite often you see parameters like this. And let's search, see what we get. Now, this is, for example, something awesome you see there's something like passwords here or something. Let's open this file. I will take the risk. 
yeah, you, you can definitely see that this looks like something systemic that is exposed. And actually, this reminds me a lot of uh, the home directory of a Linux user or something. So maybe even Buster C actually exists here. Or uh, maybe Bus History, which would be super interesting. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be the case. Also, this is not really great what I'm doing right now. That cell RC also might be here, yes. And yeah, you can definitely search and you know do tricks like that when it comes to discovering potential interesting stuff with Google. And let's go back here and just to show you how to show you how you would put this in the context of a domain. We did it earlier. Let's do one more example. Let's find something with a with an actual domain name that is interesting. For example, here on the third page, we have something similar, but we can see also a domain. And if I do site and parse this domain, dot, I'm just going to do asterisk here, whatever. You can see that I actually found this as the single result. And this is how you would use this uh, while searching uh, in the context of a particular domain. You can also search for backups of configuration files. This is actually pretty interesting. Let's do an example. For example, um, in title, let's do um, index of slash to find only websites that have directory listings. And in text, we'll do wp wordpress config.php, which usually has credentials for the database. And we can do dot back, maybe someone you know, have saved it in his server like this and it's exposed. It's very possible we will find something. And here we have actually one and yeah, db name, db user, db password. Okay. Please just don't grab this and go, you know, slapping them around in servers and everything. Okay. This is just an example. You should be doing this on a, the context of a particular domain that you are authorized to test etc so let's go let's scroll down a little bit i believe we have another one here let's see again db name db user you can see it's running probably on the local host there's plenty of stuff here Another one, again, we have keys here, some db name, login, user, you can see. Let's now search for files with specific extensions and also uh, let's focus on results that carry parameters in the URL because it's interesting from a tester's perspective. I'm going to do Facebook as an example and we can use the ext meaning extension search term to search for specific file extensions i guess it's similar it is similar to file type but it focuses on a files extension and uh, we can definitely populate this for example add more than one this better be enclosed in parentheses and uh, to to have results that carry parameters in the url only we can do in url which is a have an awesome search operator it searches for specific character sequences in a url and uh, we can do to achieve this we can do question mark and in url equal sign which is symbols often present when there are parameters uh, in the url let's search and see what we find and i'm just gonna hover over some results and you can see if you look down here that they have uh, parameters and that's a cool way to discover you know for example php files interesting files on a server files that accept parameters so you can try to inject stuff or something like that you can always search and check out the google hacking database it has a, a tremendous amount of queries that uh, return juicy stuff you can see the category here pages containing login portals um files containing juicy stuff juicy info and it's updated quite regularly we can see we have some very recent ones here for juicy info i guess for joomla this looks like a simple one index of libraries i don't see 
what particularly is interesting here i don't see any data and stuff but okay let's check a few more we can see some of the wordpress content here that we did also as an example not for backup files just for i guess to find this config or in directory listing i'm not sure why it's using this dot here but anyway this is for also juicy stuff let's just check it out i'm not sure really what's gonna be the result Here we see some branches oh okay uh, database ninja root ninja on the local host okay uh, kind of the same context but uh, this is not a backup file i guess it's just something exposed maybe some bad bad architecture of some application i'm not sure really what it is let's see one more it's really funny sometimes private files containing juicy info Oh, this is for discover php info possibly yeah accessible php info yes on servers which is a, a standard script that will print information about the system when you have a php running usually uh, this is, shouldn't be accessible by uh, people except of administrators it's here we can see it Probably all of these are the same. This doesn't seem to work. But you get the point. Definitely juicy information. Another thing you can try, and I'm just throwing ideas here, is to search for resources hosted over HTTP, which is an unsecured protocol. And here's how you would do that. Let's do site again. I'm gonna do Facebook one more time and we're gonna do in URL HTTP. Yeah, but correctly. And we are going to exclude in URL HTTPS. And this will give us results that Google have enlisted as HTTP or at least when it crawled these uh, resources, it was HTTP. And uh, most of them, at least for, for Facebook and you know very large organizations, uh, this will probably just redirect you if you click it. Uh, to an HTTPS location, but under the context of checking out, you know, uh, domains of your clients, you could uh, discover some resources that are uh, hosted in a sensitive way, in an insecure way, and you could definitely maybe even report this. Long story short, there's plenty of stuff you can do with Google Dorking. This was just a quick introduction. The only limit is your imagination. You can search here, you can even find, for example, devices, cameras, you can find open streams and check them out, which is not a good idea because you never know what you're gonna see. I don't suggest you doing this, but it's good to know. And if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.